So what does this all mean? What is the end game here? What's the reality here? Well, first and foremost, I think it's clear that the Canadian government quietly walked back the foreign homebuyer ban this week, releasing updates just days before the federal budget, seemingly trying to bury the news and the acknowledgement that they had screwed up. And while the acknowledgement that they got it wrong is a step in the right direction, at least from a politics standpoint, the reality here is that the changes have significant repercussions, both for foreign home buyers as well as for Canadians. And there's good news and bad news on both sides of this conversation. But before we get into the details, my name is Nolan Mathias, and if you want to thrive financially, this is the place for you. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. Now, before I get into this video, I want you to watch this and I want you to think, really think about what this means for you, what this means for the Canadian economy. And let me know down in the comments section, because I really want to know how you feel about this foreign buyer ban first and foremost, if it was a political action, if it was designed to buy votes, if it actually has any merit, and if these changes are something that you think are going to make the Canadian economy worse or better or the like. So make sure you watch the video and then at the end, hit me up in the comments section below and tell me what you think. Okay, so let's talk about the foreign homebuyer ban and how the federal government just walked it back just days before the federal budget. And this got missed by almost every news agency. In fact, the way that I found out about it was from an email from the Canadian Employment Relocation Council, and I subsequently had to dig quite deep for further information on it from CMHC. So whether or not this was seen as no news by the big news agencies, or whether it was simply buried intentionally is up for debate. However, these are massive changes that have a huge impact on those who are looking to buy from outside the country. And again, like I said in the intro, those Canadians who haven't already bought a home. And it could also have potential repercussions for renters who are feeling the significant squeeze of higher rents. So we're going to go old school on this one, and I'm just going to take you through the highlights. So first and foremost, this is the press release from the Canadian Employment Relocation Council. Now, this wasn't a press release from the Canadian government. This wasn't a press release that made the mainstream. This was very much a press release that was industry specific and seems to be deliberately hidden from the eyes of voters. Now, I'm not saying that this wasn't released to the media by the federal government, but at this point, it doesn't seem like it was. So let me take you through the release, and then I'll take you to the CMHC website that has the updated changes. And what's really interesting is that you have to look at the press release from the CERC and the CMHC website to really understand what's going on here, because the actual amendment document released by the federal government doesn't do much in the way of explaining what they're actually doing and why they're doing it. So first and foremost, let's take a look at the scope of the amendments. And I'll get to what this all means in a minute, but let's just look at the basics of this first. So first, amending the exception for temporary workers to enable work permit holders with 183 days or more of validity remaining on their work permit or work authorization to purchase a residential property. Repealing the vacant land provision from the definition of residential property. Increasing the control threshold from 3% to 10% so that any corporation or entity with 10% or more direct or indirect ownership of shares of ownership interest by a non-Canadian is subject to the prohibition. So I'm gonna cover that one real quick because I'm not gonna talk about that one later. So in other words, that one means instead of restricting the foreign ownership of a company who is buying property to 3%, it's restricting it to 10% instead. And then introducing an exception for non-Canadians purchasing residential property for the purposes of development. So let's talk real quick about what this means one by one. So first and foremost, amending the exception for temporary workers. Now, the reason why this one is so important is because Canadian companies started to have trouble pulling people from other countries like the US, for example, into Canada in order to take jobs. Because if you have somebody who is a high-end employee of an oil company or a financial institution, and you're trying to get them to come to Canada, but you're saying, hey, you can't buy real estate when you do move here, well, that's going to be a deal breaker for a lot of potential high level employees. So giving people who are going to be here for the legitimate purpose of working and helping build the Canadian economy, the ability to purchase residential property is really, really important. And this was a big miss when they first released this in January. They basically made it so if you were transferring in with a company, you no longer had the ability to purchase a house. So this one is smart. This one allows us to attract really great employees from other countries. So this is an important piece, especially for our economy. Now, the federal government also realized as they were going through this process that they had pretty much created a destruction effect to land development by eliminating the ability for foreign buyers to purchase vacant land and develop property, as well as putting limits on what they can purchase from a property type perspective. Now, this is where the CMHC part of this release comes into play because they explain this a little bit better from a property perspective. 
So the key highlights as far as CMHC was concerned is the act defines residential property as buildings with three dwelling units or less. So this has changed. This is the new definition, not the old definition. And this includes semi-detached houses and condominium units. The act no longer prohibits the purchase of larger buildings with four or more dwelling units. So in other words, if a foreign buyer wants to come in and purchase a property with four or more units, they are now able to do this. So if you owned a four unit or bigger apartment building, you just won big time because the value of those properties is about to go up significantly because you better believe that foreign home buyers are gonna come in and they're going to start buying those properties because they can be had for a fairly reasonable price. And that's ultimately going to have an effect on the value of those properties, as well as potentially on rents. Because there's a potential problem here from the perspective of if foreign companies are coming in or foreign entities or foreign buyers are coming in and purchasing four unit buildings, what implications does that have for a rental market, especially when rents are going up so significantly right now? Now, another big change is that they've made it so that non-Canadians can now purchase properties outside of major metropolitan areas. So in other words, they may not be able to buy in the cities, but they can now purchase outside of major metropolitan areas. So think rural and other things of that type. So this obviously led to the question of what is a census metropolitan area or a census agglomeration? And that is formed by one or more adjacent municipalities centered on a population center known as the core. So think Calgary, with Airdrie and Okotoks and Strathmore and so on and so forth, or think Toronto with all the other outlying cities that are around it, or think the Fraser Valley, which has a significant number of small cities around bigger cities. So in other words, rural areas that may fall just outside of census metropolitan areas are potentially up for grabs with respect to foreign buyers now. And this is likely good for these smaller economies. It also creates an avenue for certain types of home buyers to go and purchase properties, even though they may have a longer commute or they may not be able to buy right where they want to buy. It gives them the option, at least, which I think is a good thing. And at least in theory, this shouldn't have an upward pressure effect on the home prices in places like Vancouver, Toronto, and the other major metropolitan areas that have seen significant run-ups in prices. Now, the last key highlight here from CMHC is that certain exceptions apply, allowing non-Canadians to purchase a residential property in defined circumstances. So this is that part going back to the CERC, where they talk about having a work visa with over 183 days left on it. So they've allowed for certain types of employees to be able to come in and actually purchase properties. So what does this all mean? What is the end game here? What's the reality here? Well, first and foremost, I think it's clear that the federal government realized that they got this wrong. And with some lobbying that is tied more than likely to some of Canada's biggest companies, they basically gave the federal government a shake and said, hey, you need to give some types of people the ability to purchase. Now, on top of that, with the amount of immigration that is happening and the change in stance on immigration from the federal government, basically allowing more of it, well, we've seen a lack of development. So them opening up the ability for foreign companies to come in and develop is hugely important because it seems that Canadians with higher interest rates and Canadian corporations with higher interest rates are shying away from actually building more properties because the metrics of it just don't make sense. So if you can find foreigners and foreign companies who look at Canada and say, well, the numbers look way better there from a profit standpoint than they do in our existing country, well, that creates some incentive for them to actually invest in Canada and develop more properties, which is something that we need. Because I can tell you right now, the amount of immigration is far outpacing the number of homes that are being built, and our real estate supply issue is only going to get worse and worse and worse. And if you want to know more about what's going on in the Canadian real estate market, make sure you check out this video here, because it looks like, as of right now, the market's bottomed.